By doing something as simple as breaking your fast with a protein and fat source instead of carbohydrates, you could actually dip into your fat storage even more and burn even more fat with fasting. Today, I'm here to share with you guys three hacks to burn more fat with intermittent fasting. Also, if you don't know what intermittent fasting is, I'm gonna be taking you guys through and sharing with you what intermittent fasting is how it benefits you in terms of fat loss, but also in terms of digestive health and recovering um, from leaky gut. If you guys don't know me, I'm Elizabeth with Elizabeth Ayler Fitness. Um, I come from a background of um, kinesiology, CSCS, and I'm a holistic nutritionist and GAPS practitioner. And I'm gonna put below for you guys in my story how I overcame my eating disorder, but also H. pylori, SIBO, parasites, I had 30 pounds of severe toxemia and I built my body from there and I'm here to share everything with you guys. So let's get started today. So what is intermittent fasting? So basically it's a length of time that you are not consuming any type of food, anything to spike your insulin levels. And the main goal with this that I'm gonna be talking about today is using intermittent fasting to burn more fat as well as heal from digestive alignments. I have found that a lot of people that do fasting typically do it for the fat loss benefits. And I feel that a lot of people think that the main benefit for weight loss when it comes to intermittent fasting is the fact that you are eating during a smaller window of time. Therefore, you may be consuming less calories, which will be equivalent to caloric deficit, fat loss, but the main benefit actually is lowering your insulin response, which is your fat storing hormone. So let's break it down. So when you consume a carbohydrate, carbohydrates are actually broken down into glucose and they're sent to different organs of the body to be used as energy. And whatever is not used is stored in the liver as glycogen and also your fat tissue. During times of fasting, your body is able to break into the stored um, glycogen, convert it to glucose, and start burning that stored fat. What happens if we're eating meals um, frequently throughout the day, we're not giving our body that time of fasting for it to dip into these fat storages and start burning fat as fuel. Insulin is produced every time you consume a meal. So if you are not doing an intermittent fasting, you're eating a lot of meals throughout the day, snacking throughout the day, not having these breaks so that your body can actually start burning through that fat, which typically takes around 10 to 12 hours to go through that storage of that glucose, then your body could become over time not as sensitive to insulin and could lead to things like insulin resistance. Also from a digestive standpoint, if you have these digestive alignments and these digestive issues, fasting periods between your meals, having around four to five hours between a meal allows for your migrating motor complex, your MMC, to turn on, which helps sweep up that bad bacteria in the gut and can help with digestive issues like SIBO, um, as well as any type of bad bacteria in there. And that fasting time gives it time to focus on healing the gut. Before I move into the hacks that I wanna share with you guys to burn more fat with intermittent fasting, I wanna tell you guys the lengths of intermittent fasting and the types of people that it may or may not work for. So I typically do a 16-8 intermittent fasting period. So what that is, it's 16 hours of fasting and then I consume all of my calories, macronutrients, micronutrients within an eight hour period. There is also one um, that a lot of people start off with, which would be a 12 hour fast. You can get a lot of benefits from it, but there is also going to be an 18, six, and then there's 24 plus hour fasting that people do. So the first tip to burn more fat with fasting is going to be having protein and specifically having bone broth as your break fast meal. So when you guys are breaking your fast, whether you're doing 12 hour fasting, 16, 18, whatever it be, you do not want to immediately consume a carbohydrate. So what happens when you're fasting, your body is becoming really insulin sensitive. And when you look at it, you have your carbs, your fats, and your protein. 
Your carbohydrates are gonna spike your insulin levels, which is that fat storing hormone, the most. Then you have protein, which is a moderate spike, and fat is a very low spike. So by first thing in the morning, just consuming carbs immediately, your body is already really sensitive to insulin, which is not what we want. And if you just have, you know, that oatmeal immediately or it was not the protein source and not the healthy fat there, it's going to throw you right up, spike that insulin, and you're going to have that immediate drop. Instead, by having protein rich, protein is going to be rich for satiety. If you're on fat loss, you want to make sure you are getting adequate protein to help, again, rebuild your muscle fibers, to help with that satiety that we're talking about. But also, when it comes to fasting, it's so that we don't have that massive spike in our insulin levels, aka the fat storing hormone. So first thing in the morning, what I like to do to break my fast is I'm doing a 16-8 and right first thing in the morning, I will um, I make all my bone broth in my pressure cooker and I keep it in little mason jars frozen in my fridge. And then what I'll do is I'll just warm that up on the stove and I will have that. And the bone broth is really, really rich in proline and glycine, which are incredible for healing and sealing your gut if you have digestive issues. And then again, you're not going to get that major spike in your insulin levels that's going to knock you right out of your fat burning zone. So you're going to have more of a stable response. And then I would say around 30 minutes later is when I consume my first initial meal. And that would be a good meal that's balanced with a good carb, fat, and protein. And guys, like don't do fasting. Like fasting is another tool that you could use to help with weight loss. If you're consuming a diet full of refined carbs and like these things, they're gonna spike your insulin. Like fasting is what I use to take my performance, to take my digestion, to take my health to the next level. There's no right way to do it, no wrong way to do it, but the key is definitely making sure that in your eating window, when you are choosing the foods that you're eating, you're picking quality foods, wild caught grass fed, not going for those easy foods. Choose micronutrients, macronutrients over just process. So tip number one is to break your fast with a high quality protein source. And then I like to utilize bone broth since it has all the healing benefits of the gut. This is also not going to spike the insulin crazy high as to if you were just to have a carbohydrate source immediately, keep you more in that fat burning zone. And then I follow that 30 minutes to an hour later with a complete meal balanced with a carb, a fat, and a protein. The second tip to burn more fat with intermittent fasting is going to be starting off your day with a 20 minute fasted walk or adding in a little 10 minute walk after your meals. So first off, if you start your morning off with a 20 minute walk, okay? So you've done a 12 to 16 hour fast. Your body is very, very low in insulin. So your body has literally gone through the storage in your body and it's starting to dip into the fat storage now. So by going on a morning walk when you're in that fasted state, you are in that fat burning zone to help burn the excess belly fat. What I like to do too, is I like to throw in a 10 minute walk after my meals. So walking does some cool things when it comes to benefits with fat loss and digestion. Um, one big thing that it does do is that it lowers cortisol levels. If you are very stressed out, getting outside, getting some vitamin D is gonna help with your hormones. It's gonna lower your stress when you get outside and you get off technology. And when you lower your cortisol levels, your hormones, your insulin's going down, your body is gonna burn more fat. So it has been shown that adding in 10 minute walks after a meal not only helps speed up digestion, aiding in digestion, but they also help your body with insulin sensitivity and they lower your insulin response after that meal. So that's going to keep you more stable throughout that day. And then also, like I said, it lowers your cortisol levels and stress, which we all need to work on more. I know that I do. So tip number two is start your morning off with a 20 minute fasted walk since your body is already in that fat burning zone so that you could continue to burn more fat in that zone. Or you could add in 
10 minute walks right after your meals. And that's what I like to do to speed up digestion as well as help with that insulin response. My next hack to burn more fat with intermittent fasting as well as improve your digestion is going to be to consume electrolytes. And hear me out on this one. So we have three major electrolytes that I'm gonna be talking about right now. We have sodium, magnesium, and potassium. And when you are new to fasting, you're probably used to having meals every few hours. And now you're going extended periods of time, you know, 12, 16 hours without food. So what happens is your body initially, first thing in the morning, it's gonna be utilizing through those electrolytes. Um, when you're intermittent fasting, you may notice that you get some cravings or you feel like your energy's low or headaches or dizziness. And this could actually be because your body is excreting more sodium, potassium, and magnesium than you are taking in, which is why supplementing with an electrolyte supplement is really, it's really important. And a lot of people don't do that. Um, for example, like magnesium is involved in over 500 enzymatic reactions in the body. It helps relax your muscles, relax stress. If you run low on magnesium, it's going to throw off your sodium and your potassium. And those two are responsible for um, like fluid retention in the body. So if you have too much sodium, that may cause you to retain water. Um, and if you don't have enough potassium as well. So what I like to do, I will um, put down below the electrolytes that I use. They're all vegan. They taste amazing. I love the strawberry one. And I always do one first thing in the morning. And then during my fasting window, if I ever feel just more like low energy or feel like I'm getting some cravings, I typically throw one of those in my water. I immediately feel just like electricity. I feel my energy go through the roof. I'm not having caffeine. I'm just having sodium, potassium, and magnesium. And it's just these electrolytes are involved in so many different things in the body. And when you go into these fasting states, you don't realize that you're excreting so many things and it can lead you to feel low energy and lethargic. And then in terms of fat loss, if you don't have energy and you're feeling like crap, you're not gonna put that intensity into your training at the gym. You're gonna take less steps throughout the day. Therefore, you're not gonna be moving as much, not burning as much, and then you may start slowing down your fat loss. So my three tips are going to be, and I'm gonna go through them again, and then I'm thinking of giving you guys a bonus tip. So hold on and wait. So my first one is break your fast with high quality protein. I love doing a bone broth. And bone broth, guys, side little tip, it's a great source of electrolytes. So if you don't wanna do an electrolyte powder, um, you could do bone broth in the morning and add some Celtic sea salt to it for some extra minerals and hit two stones in one. So first tip is protein. Second tip is going to be doing that 20 minute fasted walk or even adding in 10 minute post meal walks to help with the insulin resistance aid in digestion as well and help you burn, burn more fat. And then the last one is the electrolytes. I will link my favorite one below. If you guys ever order through them, um, go ahead, email me your DM, email me your order number um, because I do giveaways every month on my Instagram and my TikTok at Elizabeth Ayler Fitness and I give away a bunch of all my favorite digestion gut healing products. I know I promised you a finale, so I'm gonna give you guys an extra tip today. And before you guys go, make sure to subscribe. New videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And if you guys are interested, I am taking on new clients right now and I will put all my information below for you guys. Don't hesitate to reach out. I am the most like easygoing person. My clients are family to me. But my final tip, okay? It's going to be adding in an apple cider vinegar. And I love Bragg's apple cider vinegar. I do um, like a teaspoon to a tablespoon before every meal. I always start off small and I always say if you're adding in anything, always start small, see how your body responds and then slowly work away from there. And again, I'm not a doctor, so always talk to your doctor before trying anything out, guys. I'm just sharing my experience. But the benefits. So apple cider vinegar has many health benefits. More specifically, what I'm talking about right now, it helps stabilize your blood sugar levels at that meal by having it. It also helps stimulate 
um, your stomach acid. So if you have acid reflux, if you have SIBO, typically you're gonna have low stomach acid or if you're just getting older, your stomach acid goes down. HCL, what it is what kills off bad bacteria in the gut, um, breaks down your protein so you're able to absorb and assimilate the nutrients from your foods. Um, if you don't wanna add in another capsule, adding in the apple cider vinegar with the meal is a great way to not only go for the fat burning with stabilizing your insulin levels at that meal, but also help with like bloating and digestion and gut biome by having that HCL benefit. So hope you guys love this. I have more coming at you. Let me know if you have any questions below. And again, don't forget to subscribe new videos two times a week. Love you guys. Remember guys, I am not a doctor. I am not here to tell you what to do. I'm just sharing my experience with you guys so that you guys could learn the science behind everything and incorporate the things into your lifestyle that you feel that is best fit for you.